James Morris Foster, date of birth, 13th of October 1918, Calabaran, Western Australia. Born and raised on the family farm at Calabaran. <coughs> Attended school from the age of 10 to 14 years of age, four years. At 14 till 18, the age of age, Jim assisted the family running the sheep farm and wheat farm. Fosters were the first farmers in Calabaran during the 1930s to fit gas producers to their twin city kerosene tractor. The gas producer was manufactured by Bruce Powell, Bruce Rock. <coughs> While still working on the farm, Jim joined CMF, which civilian military force, aged 18 for two years until the age 20 years of age. His duties were transport driver, driving instructor and Vickers machine gunner. At the outbreak of World War II, Jim enlisted in the RAAF in 1940 and his classification was technical ground crew, training at Pierce Air Force, Western Australia, rookie training. Whilst there, Jim was seconded to repair and service the biplane at Pierce Air Force Base from the HMAS Sydney cruiser berthed in Fremantle until Sydney departed for active sea duties, later sunk by the Cormoran German raider off the Western Australian coast. Jim was posted to Adelaide, South Australia, RAAF Training College for three months. Jim was posted to the RAF Engineering School in Melbourne, Victoria for eight months where he qualified as flight mechanic. On completion of his training, he was posted to Air Force Flying School in Cundinan, Western Australia, servicing flight training aircraft, namely Tiger Moth, for six months. Posted to Geraldton, Western Australia, servicing and repairing twin-engine aircraft, namely Anson. He was there for three months. Posted back to Air Pierce Air Base, jo uh, Jim joined 77 Squadron, servicing and repairing Kitty Hawks, 10 aircraft. Jim was assessed as having above average ability and mechanical knowledge and was posted back to the RAAF Engineering Training College, Melbourne, Victoria, for specialised training. On completion of the course, Jim was promoted to Airframes Fitter 2A. The course lasted six months. Jim was then posted to Port Perry, South Australia, where he serviced and repaired ferry battle aircraft, which were from the UK, three months. Then Jim was posted to Laverton, Victoria, repair and maintenance depot for bow fighters, kitty hawks, spitfires, the first of the spitfires to arrive in Australia. Jim, in helping with the assembly of the first issue of spitfires at Laverton, the aircraft on completion of assembly and commissioning was detected to having a coolant problem and after much technical discussions, diagnosis, it was considered that an additional radiator be fitted to all Spitfires serving in the RAAF. This modification alleviated the overheating of the aircraft engine. Jim was posted to 86 Squadron, which was being formed at Gawler, South Australia, Kitty Hawks P-40s, Flying and Training Air Base. Jim was posted to Townsville, Queensland, with the complete 86 Squadron by train to Ross River Airstrip, south of Townsville, Queensland, in readiness for being posted to Dutch New Guinea by Horn Island. On arrival in Dutch New Guinea, 86 Squadron and the USA Air Force established the Meraki Airfield prior to the Kitty Hawks aircraft arriving for active service duties against the Japanese Imperial Force. Four months of construction of the camp and the airfield. During active service at Meraki on the Kitty Hawk aircraft, was one of the Kitty Hawk aircraft was severely damaged, namely the right wing. The flight lieutenant, engineer and the base commander estimated that it would take over 12 months to remove the wing, ship to Australia for repairs and reassemble. They asked the squadron maintenance crew for their opinion as to an alternative action. Jim Foster suggested to the flight lieutenant and base commander that he would like to have a go at repairing the damaged wing in situ with the assistance of another crew member. The flight lieutenant listened to Jim's repair methodology and granted permission for Jim to repair the damaged wing with Jim's appointed assistant with priority. During the course of the repair, the damaged wing, Jim was unindated by inquisitive know-alls and knockers as to how long he was going to take. Without as much as a flutter of his eyelids, Jim's response was, go her off. <coughs> It'll be finished when I finished the repair or something to that effect. Jim and his assistant worked tirelessly 
for up to 14 to 16 hours a day for th three and a half weeks to repair the damaged right wing. The repair was completed in, with the bare minimum of specialised tools and equipment. Of completion of the repair, the aircraft pilot flew the aircraft and reported to the flight lieutenant and the base commander that Jims and his assistant had repaired the wing to near new fabrication. The aircraft was again serviceable. With all the excitement, Jim was given the next morning four hours off to turn to work after lunch. <laughs> we as ex-service person can imagine the flight lieutenant, commanding officer, sitting down and writing to the war office their methodology of repair and supervision of events that got the aircraft back in service. During service in Dutch New Guinea with 86 Squadron, Dream experienced many a wondrous events and activities by the efforts of the efficient pilots and air crew against the Japanese Imperial forces suppressing their invasion attempts, bombing range activities and aggression against our nation and its people. The Kitty Hawk aircraft was able to carry long range fuel tanks, belly tanks, under the side of the aircraft and would dispatch these tanks automatically if needed. This was an advantage against the Japanese who feared the Kitty Hawks dropping fuel tanks on their airstrips and burning the airbase to ruin and many casualties. Towards the last 12 months of World War II, uh, Dutch New Guineans formed their own squadron and proceeded to take over Milwaukee Airstrip. This allowed our 86 squadron to return to Townsville, Queensland, Ross River Depot, where Jim was posted to 35 squadron, looking after DC-3s, transport aircraft until World War II was officially ended. <coughs> Jim was then posted to Air Force Discharge Depot in Wembley, Western Australia where it was discovered during his discharge medical, Jim had lead poisoning from all his contact with fuel and chemicals used during his active service with the aircraft. Jim was held back in the barracks until his blood count was clear from high level lead counts. Whilst in Townsville, Jim and another air crew member were sent to, or sent on an NCO, non-commissioned officers course, which they both completed successfully. When Jim was finally discharged at Wembley Depot, and he decided to return to the family farm at Calabaran to farming duties. The prospect of Jim continuing at RAAF and obtaining commission rank were diminished. Once back on the farm, Jim very busy repairing farm, fences, dams, machinery that he had, that had been neglected whilst away during World War II. The Foster family also owned the local garage in Calabaran, mobile agent, however it was sold as Jim did not want to run the garage. Jim, with the aid of two, uh, two of his brothers, successfully farmed the Calabaran property, sheep, wheat. Jim also repaired and modified tractors, fitting gas producers to them. Farm ploughs were fitted and Jim's innovations, nothing escaped Jim's attention. Jim also purchased a General Grant ex-army tank for land clearing and drag chaining operations within the Calabaran district. In the early 1950s, Jim's brother Mervyn purchased a Gypsy Tiger Moth aeroplane as Mervyn had his pilot's license. Both he and Jim flew the aeroplane. Later Mervyn lent the plane to his friend who crashed the Tiger Moth which was then written off as a wreck. Jim was also the Shire of Calabaran Firewarden. After some time Jim's brothers moved away from the family farm leaving Jim sole owner operate. Jim having purchased 150 Cessna light aircraft for farm duties whilst his son, Lyndon, had achieved his pilot's licence aged 16. Jim used to fly the Cessna with, with Lyndon but never obtained his aircraft license. Jim in 1976 sold the family farm, as it was known, and retired to Shoalwater, Waikiki, Western Australia. Whilst Lyndon was training as an aircraft engineer, he built two aircraft under the house at Safety Bay. First was a Corby Starlight single engine, wooden frame and, and fabric aircraft, with a Volkswagen aero engine, which Lyndon, when completed, flew the plane from Perth to Melbourne and returned, with Jim following across in his Ford panel van and filled with fuel. They communicated by radio communication. The second aircraft was a Messer Thorpe T-18, sheet metal fabrication. Once all the components were completed, Lyndon finally assembled the aircraft at Janicott Airfield. After a few years, Lyndon sold the aircraft and it is still used today, training pilots in Victoria. Lyndon would like to thank his father for allowing him to follow his dream as a kid to be an aircraft engineer and pilot. Also thanks to John Douglas and Ron Griffin, just to mention a few people today. These days, Jim enjoys a friendly atmosphere of the locals and comradeship with the old Flyers Club Janicott. 
Jim since retired has built 10 assorted motor vehicles, vintage motorcycles, mainly from scrap collected over the years, a T model Ford 1918, 1926 Chryslers and other bits and pieces. Jim still enjoys the, uh, a Portal 3, a beer with friends and a hundred years of age he reckons you can all kiss his ass. May God allow you to continue your existing path in life until God calls you to repair one of the angels damaged wing. Take care mate, love from your friends. Yeah.